In some populations, a simple random sample or a stratified random sample are simply not possible. And for these, we have systematic sampling. How would you collect a random sample from roughly 50 people walking out of a grocery store next Tuesday afternoon? Usually when we have an SRS, we know all of the people in our population. We can put them in a hat or we can number them on a list. But people coming into a grocery store, we don't know who's going to show up. So for this case, we use systematic sampling. The reason we do this, or the big idea of systematic sampling, is that we're going to pick every 10th person, every 30th person, every 15th person, whatever it is, uh, to be part of our sample. It's a system or a rule. Every this person we talk to, we ask them to be in our sample. So first step to systematic sampling. We need to estimate the population size. We're not going to know exactly because we don't know who's going to show up to the grocery store, but what we can do is have some idea of roughly how many we're dealing with. Maybe a thousand people come by, maybe a hundred, but have a rough idea. Then we're going to decide how many people that we actually want in the sample. Do we want to sample 50 people? Do we want to sample 100 people? Is 10 people enough for our sample? Uh, so you have to figure out how many you actually need. Third thing is we're going to divide these two numbers to decide how often we need to stop someone. For example, if we have 1,000 people in the population and we want to sample 100 of them, we're going to take 1,000 divided by 100 and we're going to have to talk to every 10th person to make that happen. And then finally, we can't just say we're starting with the first person that walks in the door and then choosing every 10th person that comes by. We need to pick a random individual. Because if we always start with the first person, that's going to affect our results. That's not truly random. So let's run through a quick example. If we estimate the population size, that's how many people we think are going to come into the store. So our population is Tuesday afternoon shoppers at the grocery store. Let's say we get 1,000 customers. Second thing is how many people we actually need to sample. Let's say we did some calculations and we only need to sample uh, 50 people. Then we divide these two numbers. So we have a thousand customers that are likely to come in. We want to get a sample of about 50. So we're going to take a thousand divided by 50 and that's going to equal about 20. So that means that we're going to talk to every 20th customer that comes in the door. And hopefully if we get our numbers right we should get a sample of about 50. And then the last thing is starting with a random individual. The way we can do that is if we're sampling uh, every 20th customer, let's take out our calculator and randomly choose a number between 1 and 20. We do math, PRB, the fifth one down, rand in, and I'm going to do 1, 20, because I want a random person between 1 and 20, a random number between 1 and 20. 2. So person number 2 that walks through the door is going to be part of my sample. And I see that I didn't plan on getting a two here, so we'll turn that to second. Start with the second customer. And if we're going to start with customer number two, we need to, from there, sample every 20th person, so we keep adding 20. So we start with two, and then we would sample person number 22, and then number 42 and so forth uh, as people walk through the door. And you would keep doing that until you reach your sample of 50 or until you finished up whatever time you were sampling for. So systematic sampling is not for all situations, but whenever you have a, a problem where you don't know your entire population or who's going to all be there, it's an excellent, excellent tool. Anytime you're standing in front of a store, I would recommend using some form of a systematic sample.